What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously, you don't have to follow all the tips. This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those you either who may be new to the game or just need a little bit of advice. Or for those you either who want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year. And in today's episode of you to sign for, guys, we're going to take a look at Bayer Leverkusen of the Bayer in the ESD. Uh, German side competing in the Bundesliga. Uh, another successful season at the Bayer Arena for Leverkusen this year finishing in third place guaranteeing Champions League football for next season they actually had the second fewest defeats in the Bundesliga this year only behind Bayern Munich only Bayern the champions lost less times than Leverkusen this year yep they had a really good season third place finish and they are back in the Champions League next year now Bayern Leverkusen are a four and a half star team they start off with a modest budget for a four and a half, st uh, four, four and a half star team of around 44 million pounds and you see the objectives in the first season the Domestic ones are more than reasonable. Reach the quarterfinals of the DFB Pokal. That should be simple enough. Finishing the top four. Well, they've done that in real life. It's definitely doable in the game in the first season too. The toughest objective is the European one. In the Europa League, you are asked to win the trophy. That is going to be a tough objective, especially as your group contains Real Batiste, the Spanish side who really are starting to make a name for themselves. So it's it's a tough European objective, but the domestic objectives are simple enough. And a four and a half star team, this is a great team to do a career mode. They've got the three really, really nice kits. The real stadium, the buy arena in the game. I love the roof of the buy arena. It looks so cool. And also as well, you will notice they've got an abundance of young talent and they have one of the best young players in the game. Yep, just went past him. You probably know all about him. Florian Wirtz, their successor for Kai Havertz, is 82 overall with 90 potential. He's yours right from the very first season. One of the best wonder kids in the game. So, yeah, really young team. There are a few senior players here that you will want to shift on in the first season, but it's a really young team with some fantastic young talent and a really good squad overall. Uh, one thing I would recommend doing is changing daily St. Graven's position. Uh, he used to be an attacking midfield and now plays left back in this Leverkusen side. Personally, you've got a new Dutch left back in and what I would look to do is sign a new left back in this team as both aren't the highest overall at 74 and 75 respectively, I'd like to sign a new left back in the first transfer window and I'll convert Sink Graven from LB back to a more familiar position, which is CM. So change those primary and secondary positions around because Sink Graven, to me, will be better operating through the middle and a little bit further forward on the pitch as well. So I've got three players on the transfer list, uh, Baum, Gartlinger, uh, Aranguiz, and also Karim Bellarabi as well. Um, bellarabi has been at the club for over a decade. You'll know all about if you used to play FIFA back in FIFA 13, FIFA 14, a speedy winger that was in everyone's ultimate team, but he's 79 overall, 31 years old, and personally, all three of these players here are in the high 70s for overall, and in Aranguiz's case, I think he's 80 rated, so they're really good players that all have a role to play in the first 11, if not in on the bench, but because they're all in their 30s, I would recommend cashing in on all three right now. We sold Bellarabi to Monaco for 17.5 mil. Baum Gartlinger went to the Emirates for four and three quarter mil. And you'd also see that Aranguiz goes later on in this save. But for new signings with Bayer Leverkusen, well, I look at, look at recommend strengthening. Well, definitely left back, but also on the right hand side as well. If you are going to sell Bellarabi, and I do recommend it, you'll want someone younger, better, with more potential for the future. And this guy literally would be the perfect fit to replace is Kari Bellarabi. It's Riddle Baku of Wolfsburg. I love this guy in FIFA, I really do, because he's the sort of wide midfielder that can play deeper as a fullback or a wingback or forward or even through the middle of the park. He's got the stats to do all of those roles. He's a really versatile player. He's quick, he's got bags of energy, and he's got great creativity on the offensive end. Now, he's valued at 27.5 mil, but unfortunately, because you're a division rival of, Lever uh, of Wolfsburg, sorry, and the fact he's just signed a new contract extension, It'll cost you quite a bit of money. Yeah, we had to spend £40 million to get him. You might be able to get him for a little bit cheaper, around 35 37 mil. But the truth is, you'll probably have to spend well over 30 mil to get him. We did a whole extra 10 mil. 
to get hold of this guy. 12.5 million of valuation, but he's the perfect fit for Bayer Leverkusen. bellarabi has been there for a decade. He's superb, but now 31 years old, you want someone younger. Baku is eight years younger than Bellarabi. He's a rating higher, and he grows to 85 as well. I love the 91 stamina. He's so quick. He's great when going forward. And again, defensively, he's not terrible. So he can give some cover to Jeremy Frimpong at right back as well. If you want to, you can give him a support midfield development plan which will train his defensive work rate up from medium to high, and he can uh, get his defensive stats up to give Fringpong some really good cover when Jeremy goes on the overlap, or you can give him a wide playmaker development plan. Well, all, all development plans for Baku would suit him, really, but he's a top, top player, and again, I would definitely recommend he's your replacement for Bellarabi. I don't think there's a better fit, to be honest, uh, for a replacement for Bellarabi. German for German, uh, several years younger, a rating higher with more potential as well. Now, I didn't mention earlier, uh, I would sign a new left-back with this level Goose inside. Now, of course, we just got in Backer, who's a really good young Dutch talent, 21 years old with decent potential. However, he's only 75 rated, which means you can get better. And personally, this would be my number one target for the left back role. Another Premier League winner's medal secured for this guy on Sunday. He was very emotional and understandably so, especially when he draped the Premier League trophy with the Ukrainian flag. It is Alexander Zinchenko. Now, what I love about this guy is that he's very versatile, just like Baku, but also as well, you can get him for around his valuation because Man City have some really great left back and right backs who are higher rated than Zinchenko of course Jao Cancelo being a standout it means that Pep Guardiola won't hold you to ransom in terms of a transfer fee he's valued at 19 mil you can get him for that we spent 20 mil so just 1 million over the valuation to get him and that's an absolute bargain this guy's 79 rated which means he's four ratings higher than the left back right now and whilst he is three years older don't be put off by that he still grows three ratings to 82 and because of his range of stats as well he will get better than 82 if you put him on the right development plan you'll notice with Zinchenko he's a great passer at the ball he's very creative not the quickest but really decent and he can play f uh, he can play further forward and through the middle of the park as well but if you give him the defensive wide back development plan you can get his defensive work rate up to high improve his defensive stats 82 might be his true potential with dynamic potential and game time there's no doubt about it he'll exceed that and get into the mid 80s and for 20 mil it's an absolute bargain um so we did sell our anguis. in the end i couldn't negotiate a deal with real batiste so we sold into old trafford instead for 14 and three quarter million so again these guys are all really good you know that they're all got roles to play in the first team in the first season having said that because they're all in their 30s, I'd look for those younger and, and better replacements. Aranguiz is decent, don't get me wrong, but again, now he's in his 30s, I would cash in now, get the money and look for a younger replacement. And the final signing I made was this guy right here, Nicholas Loom. He's actually a Leverkusen Academy graduate, but he's not really got the quality for this Leverkusen side. He's a 28-year-old goalkeeper, 66 rated. Personally, you've got four goalkeepers here, you don't really need him, so I sold him for a little bit of money, worth getting his salaries off the books. Um, so I did change Singravan's position. Like I said, I would recommend it because he's a really good passer of the ball, great dribbling, and again, because of his decent crossing stat and not too low pace with okay stamina, he can play left back, but to me personally, I think he'd be better through the middle, and once you sold a Rangues, he'll provide cover in the reserves through the middle of the park, and after our season ticket money came in, we did just have a little bit more money remaining after the sales of a Rangues and Loom to sign a new holding mid to replace a Rangues. Two names on the shortlist, and it really depends on how much money you've got remaining here. Bubakar Camera of Marseille, who as we know, has just agreed to join Aston Villa for next season and play under Steven Gerrard or Florian Grilich as well. Now, Grilich would be a cheaper option, but he's not as good and he's four years older as well. But he's not a bad backup option if you can't afford to get Bubakar Camera. Fortunately, though, you should be able to. And the reason being is very simple. He's out of contract at the end of the season, which means you can get him for well under the valuation because Marseille don't want to lose him on a free transfer. Of course, you can get him for around 20 to 22 million. We spent 21 0.5 mil to get him. He's on a low wage at the Stad Velodrome as well, but he's a brilliant player. He's just 21 years old, but he's 80 rated and he has 86 potential as well. Yep, Steven Gerrard's pulled off a great deal there. He'll be a fantastic fan favourite of Villa Park for many years, I'm sure. I'm big on this guy. Great defensive stats. Six foot, so he's tall enough to fill in at centre back if he needs to do so with medium high work rates. As an anchor man or a ball win midfielder, either role, this guy would do a fantastic job in the DM position. So, yeah, definitely recommend it for this Leverkusen side. And again, because he's out of contract at the end of the season, he's valued at 27 mil. You don't have to pay that. You can get him for around 
around 20 to 22. We spent 21.5 mil and it's an absolute bargain. He's the same rating as Aranguiz, but over a decade younger with much better potential. So the final signing I pulled off with the little money we had remaining with Leverkusen was this guy. Uh, it's always nice to get young talent from the same club, your uh, same nationality as the club you're managing. Uh, one of the good young German talents you can get this year is FC Köln right now. It's Jan Fielman, who's 19 years old, 72 rated, not the highest, but he's got plus 10 gross. He gets to 82 potential. And he's a really, a really solid young squad winger to have as well. You know, in the first couple of seasons, probably won't play too much, but in the future, he'll get some game time and be a really handy bench player for you. Yeah, he won't cost you much money either. You can get around for £4 million, which is a very, very cheap deal. And again, in the first year or two, it will just grow quietly in the background. Won't get much game time, but I love the high, high work rates, the decent pace, the decent stamina, the decent ball control as well. He can play through the middle with some decent finishing stats and shot power stats, and he's not a bad passer of the ball either. So as a centre forward slash CAM in his team, he can do a decent job, or naturally where he is right now on the flank, he's a decent young option to have for the future. So in Leverkusen, we sold four players for 37.67 million, but the players we sold all in their 30s, apart from Loom, who is, of course, a goalkeeper who won't play in this team at 28 years old. But the four signings we made, great young talent, all of which in their early 20s, apart from right, uh, apart from uh, Fielman, of course, who's a 19-year-old. So great young talent coming in. Baku, Kamara, and Zinchenko all going into the first 11 with really solid potential. And Jan for the reserves to watch for the future as well. So we made this Leverkusen side younger, much more exciting for the future, and also a little bit better as well. The question is, could we hit those objectives? Gives reasonable domestic objectives of finishing in the top four and reaching the quarterfinals of the cup, and also the uh, toughest one, winning the Europa League as well. Well, as per usual, we simulate the end of the season, and as you can see, there was no European final for Bayer Leverkusen. You might see it right at the top there instead. We went into the Europa Conference League after clearly finishing in third place in the Europa League group, and in the Bundesliga. It was a really solid season. We actually won more games than anyone else in the Bundesliga. We had the most wins of any team with 22 out of 34. But it was the defeats, not the draws, that hurted us. Hurted us? That hurt us uh, in the end. As you can see, most defeats out of the top five teams with uh, uh, nine and uh, 69 points. Four points behind Wolfsburg, who ended up winning the title. They spent the Baku money really well. But third place, just like they got in real life, is enough for Champions League football. And that means the league objective was here. How we just won a couple more of those games. We would have been champions, man. But even so, third place, we'll take it. As for the DFB Pokal, asked to reach the quarterfinals. As you will see, we did that as well. We were knocked out by Bayern Munich in the last eight. No shame in being beaten by the best team in Germany. They went all the way to win it as well. So, fair play. So, quarterfinals of the DFB Pokal, third place in the Bundesliga. We hit both of our domestic objectives. The failure did come in Europe. Asked to win the cup. We got knocked out in the group. Yep, finished up in third place. Out on the head-to-head -head record. And in the end, as you'll see, when it's Europa Conference League, managed to go all the way to the semi-finals of the Europa Conference League, only to be beaten by Antonio Conte Spurs, who went on to win the whole thing. As I often say, there's no shame in being beaten by the winners of the competition, because it means you're beaten by the best team. So technically, in Europe and also in the domestic cup as well, we were beaten by the winners. So no shame in that, in my opinion. But yeah, even so, domestically, we hit both our objectives. We failed in Europe, yes, but to be honest to me, that's a solid first season. We buy Leverkusen. It's not a team where you expect to do one season, win it all, and then call it a day. It's an RTG. It's a long-term project. You got to dethrone Bayern first for domestic dominance and then worry about Europe three or four years down the line. It's a long term project, but it's such a great team to use. Yeah, if you're looking for a new career mode project, especially in the Bundesliga as well, this is definitely the team I would recommend. They've got lovely kits. They've got the real stadium in the Bay Arena. It's a challenge from the very first season, but again, with the young talent here already, including one of the best wonder kids in the game, Florian Verts, they're a fantastic side to use, no doubt about it. With a few aging players and a modest starting transfer budget, you'll have enough to put, on, uh, put your stamp on the team in the very first transfer window. That's what we did with the signings of Baku, Bubakar Kamara, and Zinchenko as well. But yeah, it's a 
really, really fun team, and I definitely recommend them for a FIFA career. But it will take you at least a couple of years before you can start battling with Bayern for the Bundesliga title. But once you get the domestic dominance sign up, then it's time to conquer Europe. Great team for an RTG. Had a lot of fun rebuilding this side, and I definitely recommend them for a Bundesliga FIFA career mode. But that will end today's episode of the Sign for guys. Big thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, if you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you for the next episode of Who to Sign for very soon.